Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen. Find out about all their great utilities at smilesoftware.com. Hi, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices at WWDC and AltConf in San Jose. Folks, we're just a very short time after the keynote address, and I gathered up two delinquents to, uh, to talk a little bit about it. First up, Mr. Don McAllister. Don, great to see you as always. Hi, Chuck. Oh, it's good to be here. First time in San Jose, so it's a lovely place. Yeah. Just, just a quick hop across the pond. Just a quick, short, short, yeah, little ferry ride. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Mark Fuccio. Mark, it's good to see you. Hi, Chuck. Uh, good to see you and Don. And I live in San Jose, so I want to thank both of you two, as well as thousands of others who are making this trek to uh, you know, come for the conference this week. And, and helping support the local economy, right? Yes. Yeah. Like, and like and it having fun, yes. <laughs> like yeah, it, it needs it. Yeah. it. Oh, yeah, it needs it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we don't want to belabor this, and we're sure not going to try to review everything. But I'll, st I'll ask, st start with both you, Don. What, mm -hmm. Give me something that you thought was interesting or important or whatever. Um, I mean, just from a general point of view, I mean, obviously iOS took the main bulk of the, the session, again, as you would imagine. I felt this year that it wasn't so much aimed at the developers. Uh, like, some of the sections were a little bit more sort of consumer-based, you know. I felt as though there wasn't that sort of emphasis on the, the developer side of thing this year. And I do think that um, although macOS had a, a small segment at the end, I felt that was actually, you know, a better segment. I, I, I felt they've, they've spent a lot more time on macOS this year than potentially they have on iOS. So I was quite pleased about that because I think it's reinforced, you know, the, the idea that they do like the Mac. You know, the Mac isn't going away. It's not going to be merged with iOS. The Mac is here to stay. And I think the session, uh, the Mac OS session was quite interesting and some nice new features in, in, in Mac as well. Yeah. Mark, how about you? Uh, important? Uh, interesting? What do you think? I had um, a couple of reactions. One, I you know, know what Don said, that I thought maybe this seemed to me about two-thirds marketing. Uh, most of it, you know, I think on iOS, you know, so it's it's focused on you know selling new features, and you know, I think you know the animoji and the memoji and things are just continuation of a theme. I think for you know, certain demographics who uh, will find that attractive. Uh, they talked a lot about some of the you know productivity enhancement things in terms of syncing and notes. Uh, you know, I think one thing that seemed really impressive was uh, you know the fact that uh, they're opening Siri to developers, and I think that. Uh, you know, they, they clearly highlight it on uh, iOS, but I suppose it also will happen for the Mac as well. So I, I think that's one thing that's really competitive so that everyone out there to whom I say, hey Alexa, buy toilet paper, uh, this is a way that Siri will uh, let developers add skills into it, just like uh, Amazon has for Alexa. And then um, I think some of the other key things that uh, was they mentioned uh, at the end, you know, they had this sneak peek and they, you know, they hit you know, three or four times in the presentation. They're bringing stocks app you know, enhanced and integrated with news as well, you know, to uh, iPad as well, to Mac OS, and they're doing with other iOS apps, iOS apps as well. So, I think you know, that's probably a you know, key longer-term benefit to uh, developers that they can develop and get on both Mac as well as iOS platforms. And then the thing I'm really intrigued about is, uh, you know, they're opening their machine learning platforms to uh, to developers. So. Uh, you know, Amazon, I think, has a couple year head start in this. You know, I think this will be uh, also a you know, significant development uh, and benefit for Apple developers uh, in the next several years. One thing that struck me, and it's something that everyone's going to pass over because it's so obvious, and that is that the App Store turns 10, yes. which means that we've had apps in our, on our phones for 10 years. And when you stopped, I, I stopped and think about how long I've been doing this show and realizing that I predated a lot of that and just how much it has remade our world, literally, and that's not hype. Um, you know, how, how many times I depend on an app to do something that is either super convenient or super important to me. I mean, it's very encouraging that they seem to have, and again, it goes back to where I think they're focusing more on Mac OS this year, even though it didn't have such a long time span in the, in the presentation. But, you know, the revamp of the Mac OS store, um, uh, the App Store, is, is nothing but good news, really, because that has languished a bit. It's never really kept parity with the iOS App Store. Um, so now they've put a lot of resources into there, and they've, they've rebuilt it from the ground up. It's taken a lot of the features from there as well. And I thought it was really interesting to, for them to actually name some of the big name apps, some of the big name software developers who actually moved away from the apps, the Mac App Store. Yeah. Uh, Panic, for instance, with Transmit and, and BB Edit, you know, with Barebone Software. Yes. They, they were very big, high visibility, uh, influential software houses that actually moved away from the Mac App Store. And now they're coming back. 
So it's a, it'd be quite interesting to know the backstory behind that as to how they've been able to tempt them back, whether or not the revenue share is changing or, or whether or not it's just you know the new features and the, uh, the way Apple seem to be taking the App Store on the Mac now more seriously than, than they did previously. So that, I think that's encouraging as well. So. Yeah, definitely. And I wanted to go back to something Mark said about Siri, is not just the developers, but I felt like this was something that you know now I will be able to do. I will be able to make my own Siri commands, which is something I've wanted to do from day one. It's like, and stack them, but not have to say, Siri, turn, sorry folks, uh, hey, S lady, <laughs> turn on the lights, turn on the TV, and turn the thermostat off. You know, and, and not have to, I'll be able to, to, to pre, pre-program that command and just say, hey, you, do this, and it'll do all of those things. Yeah, I, I think that I think that will be a you know, big benefit. I think that uh, yeah, Apple's had some criticism, you know, on you know how Siri is is closed, and I think this opening up is is really significant. You know, I think the developers conference, or maybe the State of the Union, they'll talk more about just how all pervasive that may be, because I think that's a game changer. Um, the fact that it's very very simply that you can create these own macros, you know, it's sort of like text expander for Siri. I would think of it, you know, as uh, it just makes, you know, it's, yes, you know, you can say, Siri, do this, do this, do this, do this, but that gets old after a while, and we all want to save those three seconds and all that mental effort that goes with it. So I think, I think that's really a good thing. It will be really interesting to see if it's, if it's, if it's truly opened up so that, uh, in a way analogous at Apple Script, you know, if you had your app open, that within uh, the context of that tool, you could, you know, integrate everything together. I'm curious, you know, what they showed indicates it's in that direction, but we'll have to see ultimately what it becomes, because I think that'd be a game changer for improving the efficiency and the, the adaptability of uh, iPhone into, uh, you know, yet more uh, you know, different environments. It's very interesting to see as well that they've obviously taken elements of the workflow application that they bought not too long ago, because lots of the Siri suggestion framework seems to be the workflow framework where you just grab blocks of actions, and they've, which was great. You know, the workflow app is great, but it's quite hard to use. But with integrating it with Siri, they seem to be taking the power of the workflow and adding some Siri you know, commands into it or control via voice. So that will you know, make the, the, the workflow packages that, that you can create much more easier to create and also to use as well. So I think that's quite a clever move. And they've moved pretty quickly on integrating that with Workflow. It's, I don't think it's been, it's probably been less than 12 months since they bought the, uh, the Workflow app, which still exists in its own form, but it looks as though they've actually brought that now across into uh, Siri suggestions, which is very positive, yeah. Anybody excited about uh, the, the implications of being able to use other apps in CarPlay? Yeah, I'm not really used CarPlay. I mean, I, I would like to use CarPlay, but um, it's, it's still limited in the UK as to the number of cars that are available, so I can't really comment on that. But yeah, Mark, are you a CarPlay user? I'm not a CarPlay user, you know. But uh, you know, I have uh, you know the the iPhone app is smarter than uh, smarter than my Toyota, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. So as a result, I've done that. I've tried CarPlay a little bit, but I've decided you know it's, I'd, I'd really rather just uh, you know, talk to my iPhone. It did, uh, it did get a big reaction, though, uh, I noticed, when Waze and uh, Google Maps came yeah. up on screen. It got a big and reaction Waze. in the room. And, and, and the Waze app, the Waze app. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I am a CarPlay user, and I was really excited by that, because as, as good as Apple Maps is, it doesn't do what Waze does by letting me crowdsource mm. information on traffic controls and accidents real-time and police traps and those kind of things. So that, that was... I was one of the ones applauding on that one. Yeah, I think I think that's significant. Also, I you know I was very impressed at some of the changes coming to the Apple TV. You know, this integration and uh, you know, as a uh, you know, part-time uh, in some locales, a chart and Spectra user, the fact that they're opening everything and you don't have to go through verification hell, and that will be integrated with Siri. That, you know, that will be really significant because. Right now, just you know, there's this friction between you know, the Apple TV and you know the the native uh, you know, content. You have to pick up two remotes and then you know change from one HDI input to the other, and it's just too many paper cuts. If you just sit there and tell, "Hey Siri, play play this local news channel," or "Hey Siri, play this on HBO," I, I think that's going to be dynamite. And I think this uh, will probably put Apple back into you know being a mainstream competitor in the living room. 
Yeah, I think it's been really interesting as well because we've been expecting every year for this big blockbuster announcement from Apple about Apple TV and how it's going to take over the set-top box. And they haven't done that. Their strategy has been to slowly, slowly build on the platform, bring out the TV app, and now this new zero configuration thing where you don't have to, you know, if you plug it into the local, um, your local network that's configured with your local service provider, it will just work, you know. So it's been a, a layering, really, of, of service on top of service, and it's getting to the point now where it looks, a, yeah, well, it is a really great product. Yeah, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about that. And I say cautiously because that's one thing that is beyond Apple's control. It has to sign up the providers. Mm -hmm. right. If it's done chartered, that's great. I'm a Comcast uh, subscriber. Yeah. Uh, was it Salt or in, in Switzerland? So I, I think these are three Beachhead accounts. And like they did before when they launched, and originally with AT&T, you know, they, they'll be able to expand and yeah. forge other partnerships yeah. in, in the fullness of time, as other companies are going to have to respond to be competitive if it really works out for these three. I, I, again, I'm hopeful. I mean, I, it always makes me just a little nervous when Apple Banks has to bank on somebody else cooperating. Mm. And, you know, definitely, I'd love to see Comcast and all the others see the wisdom of this. Yeah. But sometimes they aren't so wise. But it is always good to get some, you know, premier players in really and, and prove it with them and then you know people as you say will join the bandwagon then you know but I, I think it, it makes sense from a different perspective which is um, say for, for charter spectrum they're not in the content business so for them making it much easier for people to consume mm -hmm. their content over their pipes I think for them that's a big win you know here you know partnership with Apple that's a good partnership with Apple and in the fullness of time we'll see what ultimately Apple does with their content and we've talked about that in other shows that you've had but uh, I think they're all booms you know, directed you know, to help the Apple service business, but I think more importantly, it's it's something I think it's made to a lot of ordinary people that uh, you know, these devices, there's a lot of choice out there, but it's, there's a lot of friction in order to you know, take advantage of it. Um, so what else? What else punched your button? Because we again, we we have other sessions we want to get to, but I, but I'm curious, what else really got you excited or you thought was particularly important, Don? Um, well, again, the, the Apple Watch is just incrementally being improved on, so there was no real big feature. Uh, they didn't really focus much, uh, as much on the health aspect as they normally do on these presentations. Perhaps we might get to see that when they start to, you know, when the next version of the watch comes out, they'll promote that more. But I just thought it was a, just a solid upgrade on the, on the Apple Watch, solid upgrade on Mac OS, uh, solid upgrade on TV OS. As I say, I'm still a little bit disappointed that they didn't go more into some of the underlying technologies on iOS. Um, for instance, they haven't really, whereas in the past they've, they've focused on usability and productivity and you know, using the uh, multitasking in different ways just to help you use your iPad or your iPhone, whereas they didn't really focus on that at all today. It was it's pretty much looking at the, at the application level. So there's still a lot of work to do on iOS, and I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't really focus in on that a little bit more, which would have been useful. But across the board, you know, it's some pretty solid improvements. Mark, you were cheating. You were checking your notes. What, so, so <laughs> did they say anything interesting? Yeah. So there, there's there's two things. One, you know, you know, Tim Cook opened you know with comments about the healthy Apple ecosystem. Twenty million developers, and you know, they're just a month or two shy of paying out. Uh, what was it? A hundred. Hundred billion. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I think I think that's significant. So I think that was some of these other changes here. I think will help. You know, the the one thing that. Uh, the only sort of dark cloud I would see here was at the end, you know, they were talking about you know, raising the bar on privacy on the Mac. And so they're sandboxing a lot of other data stores like mail or time machine backups or things. And I'm curious if there are a number of third party vendors, you know, Jam Software or Watchman One or thing, where you know, they will provide managed services and tell you or tell a service provider, oh, it's been you know, three days since the time machine backup ran successfully on Chuck's Mac. Presaging maybe, maybe there's something wrong. Uh, and I just wonder if these new privacy, if it's going to get in the way and we're going to have a little bit of back and forth before, uh, you know, before Apple you know, has an appropriate response. Or if, or if maybe they've taken a far-sighted view and uh, you know, this stuff is already baked in. You know, I guess maybe stay the union or some of the other sessions would be the way to answer it. But uh, not being a registered developer, we'll have to see. Yeah, and, and we're obviously, as I said, we started this just a very short time after the keynote, so we're still gathering up some details. One thing I was excited about was was uh, the new FaceTime, or the group yes. FaceTime. That struck me as really being useful in, from, for small business, for individuals, 
being able to put, put what was it, 32 that's people? Two people. Yes. Wow. Could you record that? I was thinking about your workflows. Yeah. You know, yeah. Podcasters, yeah. 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 Exactly, yes. <laughs> so, selfishly, I think Don and I were definitely thinking that's in that area. Get, oh, right, there yeah. we go, yeah. Perhaps yeah. get rid of Skype now to... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and, and that would create a whole different kind of dynamic to yeah. you know editing the podcast yes, but yeah, that's yeah. yeah but I think FaceTime is one of those unsung heroes of, of uh, the Apple ecosystem so many people uh, you know actually move across to get iPhones to use FaceTime to communicate with the family and friends so it's really nice to see them go down that route you know and to, to build on the, the existing uh, implementation of face, uh, Facebook FaceTime yeah, yeah. <laughs> right right yeah. true yeah yeah, so I, if I were to summarize, I think um, they're, they're making a lot of changes, you know, to you know, fill in some of the gaps in their ecosystem, and then overall, you know, make their ecosystem more attractive to pull those people from, you know, those maybe the, was it the was it six or eight percent of Android users have the latest OS? They're they're just whittling away, at, you know, getting all the end more Android switchers moving into the Apple system. Yeah, I, I felt it was a good solid keynote. I felt like. Just by its, the very nature of the volume that we had, we only got little little hits of each piece of information. So, whether we'll see more in the State of the Union, it sounded like we would with the AR new AR AR file format, um, and a lot of other things we'll probably see here in the State of the Union and the rest of the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And yeah, another thing they snuck in right at the very end is APFS now supports Fusion drives and hard drives. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, it, they ran long. Obviously, they had much more yes. material yeah. here. So yeah, I, I think it's uh, it, was, it was successful. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking some time. I know we're we're all running off to other sessions, but I wanted to get something out to get you know just those very first impressions. So Don, we'll see you around. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm here for the rest of the week. Well, I'm here for a few more days, get a few more sessions in, some of the parties, some of the events going on. So yeah, that's. And, and then in a, just a few more weeks, I'll see you in Chicago at MaxDoc. Yeah, MaxDoc in July. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds good. And Mark, you live here, so we ha we may have to come back here to see you. Yes, uh, or maybe we'll see you somewhere uh, in our travels. And uh, certainly, I'm sure we'll be here next year. So you're always welcome too. Yeah. You know, John would like to see you make a repeat appearance in oh, San Jose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. We will have more this week from WWDC and the Alt Conference talking to developers about what they do and also about their reactions to the keynote as we all learn a little more. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.